This is the centennial anniversary of Einstein's birth, and tonight's recipients have taken a large step toward achieving what Einstein attempted but failed to accomplish. Nobel laureates Sheldon L. Glashow and Steven Weinberg, both of the United States, and Abdus Salam of Pakistan. here is conducive to sciences or to physics or to sort of thought experiment. Nothing. It is a wonderfully romantic story of a young lad in a turban from a market town in the Punjab that nobody had ever heard of. This romantic story should be told to every child in the third world. Salam was clearly a prodigy. He came from a perfectly ordinary middle-class background, taught by a village school teacher, essentially. And yet, just because he had that enormous amount of intelligence and the capacity, he was able to make it big. He told me that to him, the main thing about the Nobel Prize is that it would help him to attract support for, the, for his ICTP, for his institute. Well, my character is not so noble. <laughs> I would not have devoted my scientific career to making that institute uh, work. You know, being so busy with the institution, how did Salam manage to do his physics? I think he had two half of his brain, which were coexisting. One half was working in parallel with the other. He was able to switch from scientific administration Fantastic. or administration to science in a microsecond. He would work all hours. He was passionate about science. It was clear there was nothing. Above all else in life, what he was interested in was finding out how the universe works, and that was his driving passion. So we've always kept a tradition that you know, this room will be kept with all his books, his bed. Pictures of where they were, books of where they were. And so if he was to come back now, he wouldn't feel particularly uncomfortable. And I remember probably when I was about six or seven years old, and when he was here, I would ask my mother if I could bring my bedding down here and sleep on the floor there just to sleep in the same room as my father, because I saw so little of him, and I wanted to be with him as much as possible. It's my father's accounts of Cambridge in the 40s are full of the films he saw, The Red Shoes was his favorite, um, the experiences, it was full of life. And, uh, you know, everything, everything touched him, everything reached him. So this is his portrait. He had three full-time jobs at least. He was a professor of physics at Imperial. At the same time, he was setting up ICTP. And then he was also chief scientific advisor to the government in Pakistan. And how he managed to combine these things, I cannot even begin to imagine. It is superhuman. And yet, I think that he was all the time subject to very human fears. He was always worried that he wasn't doing enough. Now, we were at Kaidiazam University. I personally argued with the chairman of my department that he is the most celebrated person in South Asia at the moment. We must, must have him on campus. Well, the Jamaat said, if he comes, we shall break his legs. There was also the directorship of UNESCO. That's, uh, that after that it, it, he became, that was really when he started, his illness really started, I think. I think a lot of it had to do, he was extremely disappointed that Pakistan, they put up a, a, another candidate, which really blocked his chances. It didn't change his loyalty to Pakistan? No, he was loyal to Pakistan to the end. 
were you expecting that sort of reception when you land in Lahore? No, no, absolutely. I, you know, you thought there'd be people there, but the line of people, it just went so, so far back, and just because they had been told that the body of the Salaam is coming through. And these are not Andes, these are ordinary people. And, and that actually goes back to your point. Everything he did was for those people. To hell with the politicians, to hell with the games they wanted to play. It was the people who he was there for. That love, that affiliation, it stayed with him till the very end. And all this in spite of what the country did to him. He's a very tragic figure. But then that is his greatness. We, the present generation, seem to have inherited a house which has no windows and its walls are very high and it's very difficult to know whether we have inherited a house or a prison. <laughs>